Again, I, I would never focus on, you know, necessarily just um, being rich, but I'll say the art of, you know, obtaining a rich mentality is, you know, the biggest thing. Right. That like a rich, a rich mentality is something you can continue to pass on. That's what creates wealth. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what it's about. Like it's your mental is everything. You know what I mean? If you have the mentality to create riches, it can never be taken away. Sitting here with my man Lee, man, you know, episode two of Richard Pryor. Let the world know, let everybody know that don't know who you are, let them know who you are, a little bit about yourself. Definitely, definitely. Well, my name is Lee Driscoll. Um, some people call me Lee, some people call me Biscuit, depending on what industry uh, you know me from. But I'm honored to be over here to chop it up uh, with my guy Rich, you know, known as Richard Pryor. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just happy to be here to show my knowledge, uh, to share my, you know, my knowledge with you all, and uh, talk about my journey. That part. So, let's get right into it, man. Like, what do you do? Man, that's it's, it's a loaded, it's a loaded question yeah. because um, from fashion to uh, government contracting to eyewear to clothing, I've uh, found myself in all of those realms and currently still find myself in some type of form and fashion of being in all those realms. Uh, I'll say if you could just kind of pin the dot on one thing, it's really just being um, a great connector. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, some people say, oh, you're more of like a venture capitalist or you're uh, just good at connecting people together and materializing. So in all my ultimate goal, I guess you put a title on me would be um, venture capitalists okay um, but overall like I said my, my love my heart is definitely in that art you know fashion realm and that's why I built the majority of my, my empire so that's dope yeah. now do you ever uh, like struggle you know with juggling all those different things like I know a lot of people would tell me like you need to like you know focus on one thing and yeah, jack all <laughs> trade master no you know what I mean have, yeah have a struggle with that yeah yeah I do because um, I think as a creative which I assume you're a creative as well What's you want to tackle everything one time like you just don't have one day better yet one hour where you're just like I want to work on this yeah. you know even when you're creating you know designs it's not one time when you're just like I want to do this one shirt in this one particular color you always want variety and I feel like the mind works like that. Um, yeah. No, I think the biggest thing is executing it in a small amount of time, mm -hmm. even though time is relative, it's homing in on that one thing. Right. I'm big on, you know, focus on your plan B to make your plan A work. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because um, sometimes their plan A may not be, you know, working yeah, may not be working immediately. Yeah. It might not help really materialize to you yet. You may not know what that plan A is. That's when I say that's when you want to really truly focus on and home in on that, that particular item. When, it, when, it, yeah. when you know like, hey, and you never 100%, but when you know like, hey, this is it. look, I want I want this like clothing line and take it to the next level, that's when you're on the clock. Exactly. That's when you punch in and you're like, okay, I need to put X amount of hours into this. Exactly. That's the way I get that. I mean, did, how long did it take you to find out that, that whatever that one thing was, which, which was? Yeah, yeah, and I still don't know if it is that just that one thing. Um, I would say uh, 15 years. Ooh. It took me uh, because, like anything, like coming out of uh, high school, really somebody else put the idea of fashion, you know, into my head. Because it was like, man, you like the dress, but coming from the west side of Atlanta, you know, that's pretty much yeah. what we went to school for. It was a fashion show. It was just really the dress. That's you right. know what I mean? So. My friend was like, yo, everybody like how he went to school, uh, well actually they went to school like on like further southwest. I was more so west, west, west. Okay. Like, you know, they were more southwest. 
But either way, they were some of like the best dressed guys in that school. Right. Shout out to Westlake. And then um, I was like one of the, you know, flies dudes that Doug released in my head, which is Douglas High School. That's right. So um, at that time, he was like, man, a lot of people are really following the culture of how we always design and make clothes and we make our clothes. So why don't we design our own clothes? You know what I mean? So we decided to, um, you know, do that. I didn't really care at the time. I wasn't trying to be part of a clothing line. He knew I could draw. I had a drawing background. So he was like, look, you don't have to be part of the clothing line, but hey, uh, can you at least draw these shirts out? Draw yeah. these jeans out? So. And, yeah, <laughs> and, that's, and that's where it started, man, like 15 years ago. Yeah. Just literally me putting pen to paper. Um, I didn't fall in love with the business. I didn't understand the business aspect of it um, right away, but I, I like the attention that it bought. So that's what it really yeah. drove me. Um, the attention is what drove me maybe the next four years in that business. Yeah. Um, probably like four years into you know college at the time, I was like, okay, I love the attention, but now I see how I can make money from this. Exactly. That's at that point, you know, you're around that 21 age. You're like, okay, like I, I, I need some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, gotta period. figure this out. Point blank. <laughs> so that's when we started kind of buckling down and figuring out the business aspect of. Hey, how can we take something that we love so much that's quote unquote a hobby and turn it into a full time? So I think that again, that's when we had to press the clock. You know, five years later and say, okay, now we're on the clock. That's right. You know what I mean? And uh, that's where it started with, you know, really with Navi Art or the clothing. That's when. Now let's talk about that. What 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 is what is Navi Art? What is so when we first yeah when we first started it was new and always vocal and expressing real clothing. So oh, no. yeah. it's an acronym. So Navier, it's an okay. yeah. So new, so it's Navier, N A V I E R. Okay. So new and vocal in expressive, real clothing. That's clutch. Uh, so, of course, as we started to kind of build on, and sometimes we kind of drifted away from clothing, we kind of dropped the clothing part. Okay. But everyone always knew us as Navier. So, even going through high school, whether it was popping up at um, homecoming games, whether it was going, you know, going into school or college. We really didn't have names. It was like it was four of us. Yeah. Four or five. Don't get mad. It was four or five of us at the time. <laughs> you know, we kind of went up and down like yeah. a singing group. But um, <laughs> overall, they knew us as, oh, those are Navier boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we saw it started to build into a lifestyle. So it was more than clothing because everyone, you know, as you go grow older, you're like, man, okay, we're not making no money on this clothes. So you kind of drift off to what you want to do. Yeah. This person may go over in the music. But one thing that stayed true was Navier. Like that name, Cold. like they understood, yeah. like yo, that whatever they got cooking over there, yeah, it's we, we we love it. We we we, we want to be part of it, and that's really what the mission. To be honest with you, we made more money on these little stick pins that we made, almost like buttons mm. that we made before we made on the clothing. Another you know? one, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> so that's when we were like, okay, we think the clothing is cool, but. This making us money over here. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, boom. Tripped up on a blessing. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like, okay, man, I love these shirts. These shirts got hit. Then you put the shirts out on the table, none of them will sell. But they're like, yo, I like that hat you got yeah, on. And and it's I like, swear I get that. Yeah, I get that and it, a lot. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, I wasn't even thinking about the hat. Yeah. So that's another thing of really being true to yourself and entrepreneurship. Like, you got to take the emotion out of it. Yeah, I tell people, man, you, you know, you may hear, this is my personal story and journey. I feel like you can't fall in love with your business. Mm. You got to be able to know when to detach. Mm. You know what I mean? Because when Speak you on that. yeah, because when you're not when you're in love with something, it's like they say, love is blind. Right. You don't know when to jump. You don't know when to abort. Right. You know, you steady looking at the shirts that you're trying to sell that's not moving. You been you didn't have it on this table, you know, for, for two years every Sunday. Right. But yeah, you get it coming on comments on your hat every Sunday. Exactly. But you still have a clue. You're like, man, I'm in love with this t-shirt. I'm really exactly. careful about the hat. Yeah. And you missing out on those blessings and money at the same time. Yeah. So that's one thing we learned about Navi Yard. You know, we put 10 years into the clothing. But we weren't paying attention to, yo, they don't care about the clothing. They care about you and the brand. And then, of course, money comes with that. Pins were $5. Right. You know? The shirts we were trying to sell at the time was like 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. That's rich. So it's about knowing your demographics too. You know, you talk talking to college students, it's easy for me to be like, boom, five dollars for the pen versus here go a hundred dollars 
for a shirt that I don't even know if I really like or that I'm trying to support. Right. You know what I mean? So um, that's that was probably my first one-on-one life lesson of uh, entrepreneurship yeah, without having to go to school. Yeah, it's, and that's all paying attention to the market. Yeah, yeah. Demographics. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I say you can't fall in love with it. You got to be able to look, you know, outside and look at your brand from the outside looking in. That part. You know, like, what's working? That part. Like, if it's not working, it's just not working. It's not saying you got to ball up the paper and throw it out the window, but you got to be able to, okay, maybe I need to put this up on the shelf right now. Maybe we're a little bit ahead of our time. And that's one thing we found out with us about Navi That's right. We were ahead of our time. So, why I wear? I wear. Um, well, we noticed being in clothing at the time and apparel, uh, we, not to make me sound so old, but at the time we were really coming up was that 2003 to 2008 era. And that was a big time frame of uh, luxury brands and brand names and different things like that. So we couldn't compete with some of the luxury brands that we were like, we were a luxury brand, or okay. we considered ourselves a luxury brand. That's right. So we were, being that we didn't have the branding behind us, we didn't have the name behind us, we didn't have the paper trail behind us, we weren't able to compete at that time with some of the names and the price points that we were going up against. Right. So we decided based off of those pins and how those move, we were like, you know what? What if we did something that wouldn't compete against other brands? So let's say if you got on a Versace shirt or you got on some Gucci shoes, you may not want to wear a Navier, you know, shirt with your Gucci shoes. Right, something that exists yeah. in its own space. Yeah, and that was real big then. You know, everything had to match. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could, you know, now we flip and switch brands. You see brand collabs right yeah. now, which is real big. But then, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that wasn't the thing to do. Exactly. You know, you call it reneging. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, boom, you got, like, you got a match. Yeah. So at that time, we were just like, what can we do? So we thought about accessories, we thought about bags, we thought about hats, and then we broke it down. I was like, man, I wear And really, that came apart, I mean, along, this based off like a photo shoot that we were doing. We wanted everything to be branded, because we wanted everything to be Navi Art. Exactly. And um, same thing, it was the hat, you know, um, symbolism that I was using. So people were like, man, like, those are glasses? And the response off the glasses was way much larger than the clothes because no one had never done it before. Yeah. Like people were like, French, well, how do you even make your own glasses? Like, how yeah, do you yeah, sort yeah. like did you just step you know, slap your name on the side? Right. But we took the same initiative and the same mindset that we put into the clothes, yeah, the same formula, and we put it into the glasses. Yeah. You know, so um yeah, that's really the story where the story began with the particular item. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So what's what's unique about Naviar? Like what sets uh, what sets your eyewear apart, apart from other? Well, first I, I would say there's not too many brands where you say you know a group of five black brothers came together to produce something. Right. You know, not like we're all like certain solid investors or this person is doing this. We're all we all have five hands in a pot. Right. Whether it's from designing, whether it's the colorway, whether it's sketching it out, whether it's just the mental process, the thought behind it, all the way down to the branding. Right. That's all done in house. Secondly, we're all we all grew up together. We're all from Atlanta. You know what I mean? So you don't have too many people, you know, don't look at the South as luxury in a sense, you know what I mean? Right. Even though now we house a lot of luxury yeah. houses and fashion it's houses. Honest, yeah. But really at that time, you know, the South dirty South. You know what I mean? You yeah. didn't really. We always got clean. We always got fresh. But to yeah, have was branded. right, but to yeah. have luxury come out of a black culture, you really didn't have that. Like black people never really were known for stapling, you know, an actual luxury brand or be the owners of a luxury brand. So um, that was another thing. And then two, um, the, the attention, you know, to detail for our glasses. Like our glasses are made in Italy. You know what I'm saying? It. But yeah, yeah. yeah that's but, dope. but we still pay homage to Atlanta. You know, before we used to hide where we were from. We didn't want people to know. You know, every time we met, it was like, man, let's meet a bucket. Let's do this. But why? Why? Uh, why? Because we thought like luxury was everything had to be luxury. You know what I mean? But we noticed people again fell in love with the hat. You know, they love the, the grit and the story about, you know, College Park or going through banking and the stories and the trials and tribulations. A lot of times we try to 
push that off to the side. Now let's get into that. Let's get into that. Not to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I want, I want to get into that. Like, what, what for everybody who don't know, where do you come from, man? Oh uh, yeah, so I, yeah. I come from College Park. Um, that's a lot of people here, Old National. That's south side of Atlanta. That's going towards like you know the airport. Um, to kind of put it in music terms, because that's, that's my second love, even though I can't sing, even though I can't rap. That's right. But to put it in music terms, that's, you know, a little bit of outcast sprinkled with a little bit of, you know, Goody Mob sprinkled with a little bit of 2 Chains sprinkled okay. with a little uh, Ludacris. Okay. You know, these are people that were birthed out of that same area and walked a lot of the, walked a lot of the same, you know, Street. halls that's right. that we have. And I think if you look at all those people that I just named, one thing that they got in common is tenure. You know, they've been in the game for a long time and they were all different. They might not been the cool kids, you know, really growing up on that side of town, but, you know, 30 years later, they, they're they still standing, Yeah. you know, in their that's heart. Speak, that speaks loud. Life, that speaks loud. Mean? So, um, yeah, that, that's where I came from. Um, my other ca uh, guys, we still, we all really came from that College Park um, area. Like, you know, as we, um, started to kind of travel up you know go through college school we brought in one of my college roommates um around a little who uh, was actually from uh from washington no where he, oh he's gonna he's gonna kill me colorado so he was literally from the opposite side of the world so that was that was a, uh, one of the best additions that we ever did at the time that's dope how did uh like your upbringing in your community influence your mentality? Um, hustle, um, grit. How so? Um, man, if nothing came easy. Yeah, that was one. It was uh, it, like no didn't mean anything to us, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it was like we always got told no. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So some people are scared to give of rejection, man. You always, you know, were scared of rejection. And really just growing up in the community, I did whether it was playing around at the YMCA, or at the pool chasing the little girls around, you gonna get no all the time. You'll yeah. get pushed, pushed down, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. So I think growing up in College Park for me was I, I really got to be able to be a kid. Even though we grew up quote unquote in the hood, we really didn't know it was the hood. Right. So uh, we were kind of naive to the type of life, you know, lifestyle that we had. Um, and what brought the grit was when we were able to open up our eyes and be like, oh, and, and go outside of College Park and go to some of these other nicer places, whether it was Fayetteville, whether it was Buckhead, it gave us some kind of ambition. Right. You know, because we were just like, oh, you live in Fayetteville, or you live in this big house, or you live in Buckhead, or you, you know, it became, it came reachable. Yeah. And really, when you saw people like us, that was the great thing about Atlanta being a black man, we were, it became attainable. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, man, that's just for this type of group, or I mean, this is for this type of social class. Like, coming from College Park, you know, we were almost content with our environment yeah. but when we were able to get outside of our environment it was like man yeah, yeah. it's, it's more out there yeah it's real you know what I mean I definitely can relate to that yeah um what made you want to become an entrepreneur <laughs> money yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't I, I feel like I was an entrepreneur before I knew what an entrepreneur was yeah, I feel I, like I agree. I agree. um I feel that like a lot of people of color are somewhat forced to be an entrepreneur before they even know what it is you know what I mean? Like, why, why, why would you say that? Man, I was trying to get the, the new pair of J's when I was 10 and I couldn't work. Mm. You know, so I had to figure out like, hey, how can it? Mama can't get it, daddy can't get it. How can I get this? Exactly. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you turn 13, at least here, you was able to work a little bit, but then you still see, hey, sometimes your paycheck still ain't adding up yeah. to your eyes or to what you like. So you figure out, you know, whether it's legal or illegal, how to supply and demand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that might you know, that might have been clothes, that may be something else, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that's that's so when did I learn or did I when I have a passion to become an entrepreneur? To be honest with you, it probably wasn't until college that I really became a cool thing to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until I actually knew and had the knowledge of like, hey, this is what we need to like this is what an entrepreneur is. These are the steps, but overall, honestly, I was probably a husband for ten years prior. Before, yeah, before that, didn't even know it. Yeah, didn't even I know definitely it. relate. I definitely yeah. relate. I remember wanting to work before I even could get a permit to work. Yeah, that's you what I'm saying. saying. Yeah, cutting I grass, man, whatever it may have been. Whatever, whatever you know what it may have been, it was never. Yeah. The work was never the fear. You know what I'm saying? 
know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That was never the fear. Yeah, it was normal. It was, it was a lifestyle. That's why I tell people say lifestyle is truly, truly a lifestyle. Exactly. Now, can anybody be an entrepreneur? Anybody, anybody can be anything, but I would say a successful entrepreneur? No. <laughs> you, know I mean? you know what I mean? Like, anybody can be a doctor. Yeah. But if you, like, if you don't put in that time, and I use the word grit, sometimes and some people aren't born with that natural hustle. Yeah. That's how grit is. And I feel like to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur is the hardest thing to be. Yeah. It's easy to get a nine to five. Yeah. You know, but um, to be a, a successful entrepreneur, you got to be used to getting pushed down, kicked. You got to have thick skin. You got to be used to being told no a lot of times. You know what I mean? And you got to know when you're not being insane. You know, like, dang, like, am I really cut out for this? Like, is the product I'm pushing the right thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do I need, you know, you got to recalibrate. Make sure you, know you ain't delusional yeah, yeah, about yeah, what like, you're whoa, doing. Yeah. Like, I, know, I thought it was dope. Yeah. I thought it was fire, <laughs> but maybe it ain't that fire, you know? I used to think I was the best rapper until I heard the best rapper. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to get out of this studio. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you can maybe this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? You know? So I feel like with entrepreneur, you think you're a great entrepreneur until you see a great when entrepreneur. entrepreneur yeah. And that's my battle. You know, my thing is my true fight. What keeps me going in the entrepreneur role is to be the best at whatever I do. So anytime you sit down at the table, you can down there at least have a conversation, even if you're not monetized. Well, if you're not like financially wise, you may not be at the same as that next entrepreneur. They may have more years in the game. They may have a better product. But I should be able to still hold the same conversation mm. with that entrepreneur. And I feel like that's, mindset. Yeah, mindset. I feel like that's what creates a great entrepreneur. Mm. It's not about how much money you bring in annually, none of that. It's the mindset, the grit, the resilience. Because this guy could be a great entrepreneur for one year. Yeah. But that don't make him a successful yeah. and it's entrepreneur. Yeah. Perseverance. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's at the, I, I call it the end game. You know what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, that's what you should have it on, you know, on your gravestone. Right. You know, at the end of the day, your last thing people should be like, "Oh yeah, he was a dope, he was a dope, he was a dope business owner, or he was a great entrepreneur." That's right. That's right. That. Now, talk to me about like I heard you say something earlier about um, you know, when you were young, coming up, yeah. getting told no, getting knocked down. Yeah. yeah. What What does you know? What went into your mindset if you can think back to a time where you were told no? What went uh, into the mindset of making you like you know? keep trying and keep going? Um, I would say, man, man, there's a couple of things. I mean, one was as simple as me just being resilient. It was probably the first time when I wanted those nice pair of shoes and my mom was like, no. Yeah. And I was like, you know, from a kid, you're like, okay, what does no mean? Or well, no is no, <laughs> normally a word that can be bent. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, how yeah. many times can I can she say no before she turns so that yes. on to a you know into yeah. a yes? Um, when I understood that no truly meant no, that's when I think that creative side, and that's due to my mom and my dad as well, but more so my mom, because she had an entrepreneurial spirit. That's so right. she was the person that would take me, you know, to her wedding shop downtown and be like, hey, you know, you want these shoes that's a hundred dollars? If you sell this T-shirt, you know, for ten dollars, you know, you sell ten of those. Then at the end of the week, you can get those shoes as a hundred dollars. So, um, that seed, huh? yeah, one thing she planned for me is no is always temporary. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, that was that was one of the biggest things. Another thing you heard me, I was always into art. Right. I used to like to draw and paint. So um, I think as a youth, we're always sheltered. You know, and our parents always let us know when we first place. Until you get in a real race, and then they like, yeah, 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 you didn't really, no, you don't belong in that yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. So um, I applied to, you know, well, I went to this art school, okay. and um, I wanted to be, uh, well, it was like an art contest, you know, for the most part. So going to the art school, I literally like lost every art competition wow. <laughs> there was in the art school but like I said my the end game was for me to be one of the best artists in there and win whatever that final competition was because you got money at the end right so I was like okay I may be missing these short relays right you know for these three months in this particular camp but the end goal was to win the particular drawing contest which can actually catapult you to the 1996 Olympics 
to actually draw for one of their actual Olympic events. Mm. And fast forward, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. So fast forward, man, I won that particular contest and I placed. So again, I went back to knowing like, no, it's temporary, you know what I mean? Or this particular race right now may not be meant for you to win. Exactly. You know what I mean? You may need to fall and get bruised up and scratched up, you know, for that, that bigger picture. That's dope. You know I mean? That's dope. The, the process. Process. Everything is process. It's yeah. gonna take time. Man. Yeah. Everything takes time and it's for a reason. The worst thing is be put in a adult position or that ultimate goal falls in your lap and you're not prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you gotta turn it in. Yeah. Like that's that's, that's the, worst the worst feeling ever. That's the worst. That's the worst feeling. Yeah. I'm sure everybody probably got an example of that, but that's the worst feeling. So I've always, you know, vowed to myself to always be ready. That's right. You know what I mean? People you always see, you know, live, you know, live, you know, every day like it's your last, but you really gotta live like that. That's put dope. the work in, be prepared. That's dope. Um, well, we gonna talk to me about uh, government contract. Oh, man. What's to that? Man, that's that's big. Um, is it? I call it. Even though people don't like this word, I call it the cheat code. Um, to be honest with you, the, the most successful things I've ever done in life didn't involve school. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, um, I feel like uh, government contracting is. What Walmart is, government contracting is what Amazon is. You know, government contracting is everything we sit on every day, uh, every product we use every day, but we never ask ourselves, like, how are these products made? Mm. You know what I mean? And who supplies these products? Government contracting is the supplier. Mm. Simple as that. So we always consume, 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 and we always think about, man, how can I, you know, sell my brand, or how can I sell this shirt, or how can I sell these shoes that I just made? But we never think about the material that those shoes, those hats, you know, whatever it may be, or the cars that we drive in, what those materials are made of. Yeah. And that's what government contracting. They're actually the supplies that the government purchases from small businesses to give to the public. Mm -hmm. So this is that. So what we did, we. If Naviar, I'm speaking of the same group of guys, we okay. infused ourselves as a broker in the middle of these agencies. So you got the public here, you got the government right here. The government got the bad, the public got the bad, but they're the consumer. The government is the agent. They're, on, they're in a sense to sell them, but the government don't know how to talk to the people. Exactly. So you need the people in the middle to broker that situation. Naviar are the people in the middle to broker that situation. Okay. Or to source those particular, you know, items to give to the public. And in a nutshell, that's what government contracting. Um, and to be honest with you, government contracting can, can change your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, done the right way, it takes a little patience. But overall, government contracting, like, changed my whole way of thinking and the trajectory of my life. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's smart. And yeah, and, and if you look at a lot of these billionaires, that's out here obviously has made a lot of millionaires but a lot of these billionaires that own you know whether it's you know nfl team or they may own this car you know dealership a lot of times they've made their money with government contract and that a lot of people don't know they just put a lot it's a smoke screen a lot of a lot of them just put certain things in the front of that to kind of disguise it how they make their money but government contracting is really an infinite amount of money that's given it's out, that's yeah. paid out to small businesses every year. Wow. And a lot of black people don't know about that. A lot of people color I don't imagine. know about that. Yeah, I didn't know about it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I want to know a little bit yeah, more yeah, about we're gonna it. Talk, yeah, yeah, we're going to talk more, yeah. But it is, it's super big. Now, yeah. now, it's starting to become more like conversation because now they're making a point where, look, they have to give a certain yeah. percentage to I actually know a guy now yeah. that we're talking about. Like I said, yeah. I didn't know this before, but I actually know a guy that uh, enforces that. Like he goes and makes sure that certain places are holding that certain ratio. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's supposed to be dispersed to yeah. the black community? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't. I, I now I got another doctor. Yeah, think, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I used to be in meetings when he was enforcing it. And you still kind of like, and I'm oh, just like, I'm watching him do it. And that's the thing. It's, so, it's, it's almost like a foreign language. But once you learn that language, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And now you see why you fit in that in the equation. And then now you can go on your hunt. That's exactly. 
exactly. And that's why I say it's just home and in. Sometimes when we get too much information, we kind of psych ourselves out. Yeah. You know, in the beginning stages. But, man, yeah, like, like I said, that's a whole other episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. That we that, go for hours. That's the secret. That's the, that's the secret right there. I mean, how has uh, self-awareness and self-confidence, like, played a part in your your journey, in your life? Man, it's everything because, yeah, I mean, self-awareness, uh, self-confidence is everything. I'll say self-awareness first because you got to truly know why you get up every morning. Mm -hmm. Like, forget the entrepreneurship, forget the fluff. Like, why do you do what you do? Why do you want your business to be successful? Why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Because you may not want to. You know what I mean? A lot of times we work backwards. You know, like, you may that may not be your calling. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, the quicker you find out who you are as a person, the faster you'll be successful in whatever you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, your main goal may be to have a wife, a dog, and a kid. You know what I mean? But until you know that in your heart, then that's not going to happen. Exactly. You know, you may be like, hey, I want to have my first million, you know, and before I'm 30 years old, that can happen, but only if you dialed in and, and tuned in to, you know, what you truly want to do, and if that's for you. A lot exactly. of times it's not for you. You know what I mean? So, um, I would say, man, you're, knowing yourself is everything. Yeah. That's everything. That's why you have so many depressed millionaires out here. You know? How has, how has, how has self-awareness influence like your decision making and how you, you know, how you go about, you know, making yeah. decisions? Um, it, it, it means a lot because it, it really helps me every day in the decisions, the business deals that I take on. Because now I won't invest or take on a business deal that I feel can't help the people. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like, okay, if I do this, I look at the trajectory, how much money that could be made in a certain span of time. I look at how much time I got on this earth. Is that worth my time? Exactly. So I may shift over here and maybe like, hey, government contracting. You know, if I put, you know, put that in full gear <laughs> for 12 months, I can yeah. help out way more way people in a smaller amount of time. Makes so sense. that's um, that, I, I kind of tap into that every day, and I think that's what kind of keeps keeps you in line. Kind of like how we talked about earlier before we started. Yeah. That's kind of what keeps your focus of juggling too much. That's right. It's kind of like, what can you monetize now? What can push you towards your ultimate goal? You know, the quickest. That's right. That's dope. Can you um, can you think of a time in your life where you chose your purpose and your passion over money or promise of a big beneficial financial gain? Yeah. Not to tap back into my old day or my old way yeah, of going it. to the, you know, and going to the streets. Because a lot of times when I'm like, man, I can take this little thousand dollars and put it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You know, to yeah. flip that real quick. Yeah. You know, but um, we got a lot of people watching that's going to yeah, be, you know, yeah, talk yeah. to them. But um, but a lot of people don't know you can take that same thousand dollars and invest it and inject it into something. Simple. You know, a lot of people want the answer. You can put that thousand towards real estate. Right. And a lot of people are like, oh man, you can lose it or you can flip, but it's so many sectors of real estate that you can put your money in. This is just one way. And you can lose it yeah, and everything yeah, you else. Can you can know. lose it. Exactly. You know I didn't lost it before. Yeah. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my thing is, um, you know, you hear the term private label, you know, like look into that Amazon private label. Yeah, you can take a thousand dollars, put it in that, and, and quadruple that 100%. Right. You know, within 12 months, if not sooner. So um, I tell people, man, that's that's one way. It's not just being, you know, selfless. Right. You know, you can't. You got. You got to look at the end game. You know what I mean? I feel like when you take, you know, the easy way out, sometimes I say that's an easy way, but it can really lead you astray. And that may not be for anything that you're doing illegal. That could be anything. Yeah. You may be like, man, let me take this job that's paying X amount of dollars, but that's taking up all your time, time. of the day, yeah. and you don't have the, you know, the time to actually put towards your true purpose and passion that's here. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's just as bad as doing something illegal. You know what I mean? Because it's still taking you away from, you know, what your true purpose. That's why I say you got to understand who you are and what you cut out. Yeah. You know, for you know what I mean? Yeah. So I come together. Yeah. What's your definition of money? If you could put it in a, you know. Definition. Yeah, I look at money as being a smokescreen. It's fake. It's not real. Um, anytime you focus on money, 
for your end goal, you're gonna lose you're gonna lose yourself. You gotta parallel your end goal with the money, like the money gonna come. I, mean, I know it's hard to really grasp it, grasp that sometimes, but you gotta truly focus on what your purpose and the end goal. Money is a distraction. That's why so many people working nine to fives, nothing is nine to five. I, I work. Yeah. But you gotta truly understand it's the nine to five that I'm working, it's the business that I'm building for the entrepreneurs working towards my ultimate goal. I mean, some people got to have businesses, but they not working towards the ultimate goal. They've been doing the same thing for 50 years. You know what I mean? Like, so what? Yeah, it has to be progression. Sometimes it may be better for you just get a nine to five. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So my thing is, is truly understanding what is the end game, what is the end goal, and am I happy along this journey doing that? Nine times out of ten, what I say in my life, when you do that and you put your best foot forward, the money is gonna come, and it's gonna come in many ways. You know, you may be like, man, I gotta man, hurry up, make all this money, get a car. You never know who you're blessing through your journey in focusing on your end goal because that car may get handed to you, mm. or that mode of transportation may get handed to you, mm. or you may end up getting that lease of condo downtown that's right by your gig to the point where you don't need a car. You can walk right across the street. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What is, you know, what is your pride like? What are you willing to put aside? And what is your end goal? You know what I mean? My end goal used to be a material, but, you know, material thing. But once I was like, you know what? I don't care about this. It helps you focus on, damn, what I needed was right here the whole time. That extra $800 I was shelling out on my car is really that rental property I could have had this whole time. But you praying about, oh man, please show me a sign. A lot of times we blocking our own blessings and our own signs. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. Um, I wanna, I wanna kind of spin off of that for a second. Yeah. Cause I, I heard you say something about how you know how you work. Yeah. Can you talk to me about when I first, when I first met yeah. you? Yeah. You was telling me your story, a little bit about your story about how you know you started off working in, in certain spots, and I remember you. I remember specifically you said you was working in a jewelry store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember you saying like, man, I don't really, you know, I don't really sell like that. Yeah, I just yeah. really just. Yeah. You know, tell a story, conversate with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was pulling people about the jewelry store, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to, Can you talk yeah, to yeah, people yeah. about that? Yeah, um, really, I just tell people, man, selling is an art. You know, it, it, it's, it's an art to sell. It's not, you know, some, some people say, hell, it's something I was blessed with, you get the gap. Yeah, but I feel like it's an art that has to be perfected because it's 50% psychology, you know, in sales, you know what I mean? So I feel like, if you can balance that psychology with a little bit of organic, you know, being organic and a good, yeah, authenticity and having a great product, you and the can't, can't lose, you, yeah. you, you can't lose. So I've always been, I won't name the company, but I've always been blessed to be able to work in like known luxury, you know, names. So I really never had to sell the product. Right. I was the only person that was getting in the way of the product. Right. So I had to kind of manicure myself and, you know, you know what I mean, to, so I wouldn't get in the way. Yeah, because he was selling himself. Yeah, he's selling himself. So a lot of times when you can't sell a great product, it's the person that you got in between that product and that diet. You know what I mean? And the same thing for your product. You're pushing, you know, Richard, you know what I mean? But sometimes you may not be able to sell something because it may be who you got and, that, and it may be you. Right. You know what I mean? So right. how can I position this great product that's already in my hand to the masses? Right. So I learned it through conversation. I'm not saying I gotta pour out my story and make people feel sorry for me, but it's really just listening. Yeah. You know, what I notice is people purchase through is their cute. You know, people don't purchase just, oh, this is because even if they say, oh, I just want to buy something that Typically, purchases are made through as a form of therapy. You know what I mean, man? I had a long day at work today, man. I just let me just search on the internet. Let me just walk in the mall and just see. Let me look at something that's nice. I never heard it put like that. That's, yeah, that's it's cute. therapy, man. Like it's not. You know, a lot of times, a lot of stuff we buy is just because. Oh man, the quality of this is just so great. I'm gonna buy it. We see nice. In that case, everybody be driving Maybachs and Rolls Royces right now. Yeah. That they, you know, they have the money. It's a lot of people that doesn't move them driving to luxury items or just to items in general you know it's just all about connecting listening to that person across that counter or whatever your form of business is and 
interpreting that into the product that they're looking at. You know what I mean? I would just listen. And that's what I know is a lot of people say, you know, sales, saleswomen, salesmen, or therapists. Yeah. I never heard that, but I, that's, 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 that's dope. That's what we are. That's dope. You know, I know all my clients' business just because I listen. Yeah. You know, then it's like, oh, okay, how much was I paying? Let me just get that. That's yeah. at the end. Yeah. That's after the, that's after the story is in. Wow. You know? I do that. I do that. But yeah. just, you got to put it in more of a, yeah. you know, clarity. Yeah. That's, that's dope. I, I tell people just shut up. Yeah, you know, it's like a barber, you know. You know yeah. I started off kind of as yeah. a as a barber too. Oh yeah, you know, so man. that's so you so, already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 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 yeah. exactly that's yeah. key. Sometimes we just gotta be quiet, and sometimes that's hard, really for creatives and for we want to express ourselves so much. You know, we leaders. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, no, no, be, uh, I'm gonna show you how to. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And I used to be that person, but they say, you know, sometimes you know the, the more words that come out of that mouth. You know, it can make you a fool. Yeah, you, put you know. Foot in your mouth. You know, so it's just like you know, like they say, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. You know, so listen, just listen yeah. two times more than you speak. That's dope. You know, and that's another reason why you know not to my own arm, but that's another reason why I started this yeah. platform. You know what I mean? Because I, I realized that I would do this. You know what I mean? When I wasn't in sale mode, I would just be you know chopping it up and just really listening. And I and I started to see like when I was living another life yeah, yeah exactly. a lot of my associates and and, and business partners yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. would, would call me and they were like in their 40s and 30s old, older calling me just to talk because they knew i was listening that's what i'm saying you know like you said that's therapy. Saying. It's, ther it's therapy that's what I'm you never know what you're doing and how that's affecting somebody else you know they may look at the life you're living and be like bro he's the person i come and get my hair cut every friday every saturday every sunday from here to see him, as simple as that. Yeah. You know, a lot of times that's that balance that a lot of people need. You know what I mean? That's dope. You know, a lot of times we're thinking about our struggle and what we're going through, but we don't understand how many people we got on our shoulders that's actually watching that's just kind of sitting back in the cut waiting like, okay, I got, I got a blessing from him. I see how he done navigated through this situation. You know? Yeah. So, that's dope. Yeah. That leads me to my next question. Does money make you rich? I mean, in the in the physical in the physical form. Yeah. But like I said, man, it's easy as money come, money money can go. There's a lot of used to be. You know, I used to have this. I used right. to have money. But if that makes you content, it would not make me content to be rich for a week, a year, for ten years. You know. Um, so to answer your question, no. Uh, money at all. Like I said, money's fake. Yeah. Most people that really truly have money don't physically see money. Huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's something like you get this cryptocurrency and all that is really not yeah, physical like money. Idea. Like, you know, if you're like, oh, you got 200, you know, million dollars. It's not, they don't have 200 million dollars in a bank. You know, if they're valued at 200 million dollars, it's, it's assets. So my thing is, you can become rich just based off of, could I put my foot to the pavement when I was grinding, I was this much smarter than this person. It's really about, um, it's, it's not the dollar. It's the more talented than the dirt property. Your friendships create money. You know what I mean? Investing in people create money. You know, if I make you a millionaire, Jay said, you know, Jay said the best. He's like, I made Dane a million, you know, a millionaire. Yeah. I made Yay a millionaire. You know, I made Beans a millionaire. If he went in his film. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. He, he created he created other revenue streams around him to secure his wealth. So we can all be each other's crutches. What'd he say? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Loaded bases. Yeah, load, loaded bases. So that's overall, that, again, I, I would never focus on, you know, necessarily just um, being rich, but I'll say the art of, you know, obtaining a rich mentality is, you know, the biggest thing. Right. That, like, a rich, a rich mentality is something you can continue to pass on. That's what creates wealth. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what it's about. Like it's your mental is everything. You know what I mean? If you have the mentality to create riches, it can never be taken away from you. Another one. <laughs> what validates you? Man, at least staying rooted in I don't know if I can ever I, this sound, now this sounds crazy because I haven't traveled a lot and did all kind of stuff, but me staying rooted in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, that's strong. And I get it. Yeah, Cause it's it's just it, it keeps me alive and, and woke you know waking every day. 
You know what I mean? Sometimes when I'm in my luxury rounds and injury stores and in bucket and stuff, sometimes I lose, you know, a part of me. Mm. You know, sometimes. Yeah. But when I'm back here, I'm able to, you know, recalibrate again. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, boom. You know, is my focus right? Is this right? You know what I mean? Am I, am I doing it? Am I staying true to myself? And that's what it comes down to. You know, a lot of people, times we say, are oh, we being true to the people? It's not about the people. It's about, are you true to yourself? Because if you're true to yourself, then naturally you'll be true to the people. That's you know right. what I mean? So I, I feel that um, that's what keeps me rooted. I mean, it's my city. Knowing how much my city played in my success, being true with that, and also understanding the people who showed it that I stood on, making sure that I'm being that, you know, that foundation for the next person. That's good. That's good. So, what's what's next for you and your brand, you know, and where can people follow you at and keep in contact? Yeah, yeah. Uh, next, man. Is uh, you should see some type of uh, lead drift or investments up on the building somewhere. But um, overall, I would say, you know, follow Navier, N-A-V-I-E-R, uh, Eyewear, just like, you know, Eyewear. Also, um, you know, follow Navier International, just like International Place. Um, because even though you may see glasses here, you may see government contracting here, we're pretty much dropping a lot of gems on the industries that are sustainable that's going to be here a hundred years from now. You know what I mean? So I would say as long as you follow one of those platforms, believe me, we're going to have you on the right track. It's not too much fluff on those platforms. That's you know what I mean? That's that's right. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, now this segment, before we close out, is called Richard Priorities. <laughs> you know, like you know, like you know like the like razzle like dazzle, that. you know what I'm saying? Like that, like that, like that. Name three things that's worth more than money to you? Uh, that's probably all. Family, times, and mental. Mm -hmm. And break them three down. Uh, wow. Well, mental is everything, because if you don't have your mental, you can't navigate. Mm -hmm. This is this what you protect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, make sure you have your helmet on. Thank you, Cal. You know, that, that's, that's, that's deeper than anything. Like, that you always want to protect the head. Yeah. You go out on the baseball field, put your helmet on. You go to a work site, put your helmet on. You got to protect the mental because that's your strong, that's your weapon. Mm -hmm. That's your unseen weapon. That's the silencer. That's the sniper that's up in the window on the, thir <laughs> you know, on the 30th floor. Yeah. You know? Um, so, mental is, is definitely big on our list. Family is super big because, again, that's, that's a support system. That's your legacy. Um, that's who keeps you balanced when nobody else is going to keep you balanced. That's who knows all your secrets. That's who knows all your weaknesses. That's why you got to be careful who you call family. Um, so family is, yeah. <laughs> that part. Yeah. Family, family is everything. And time, yeah. Time is the biggest thing to keep you in check and everything. You know, right now, for Dr. Turkey, you had, you know, six months. You can hurry up and figure out who you are. Exactly. You know, in the last day. Yeah. You know? And it shouldn't take that time, yeah. that conversation we having with a doctor for you to then, you know, check in. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to start really understanding, like, what is my purpose now? If I got six months and really plan out your life like that. That's what I did with my business. I was like, man, you know, you always like, man, when I get older, when I get bigger, I really think about it, yo. Okay, break it down. It sounds kind of morbid, but break it down. Okay, I got maybe, you know, 40 more years on this planet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What can I do within that time frame? Break down those 40 years to years. Break down each year to months. Right. Break down those months to weeks. And the hardest part, break down those weeks to days and really make sure that everything you're doing every day is going, is pushing towards that ultimate goal. And you may not know your goal right now, but don't let that be an excuse to be stagnant. Yeah, I just read that in, um, in a book recently. Like, that is not an excuse for complacency, not knowing what your ultimate goal is. That's, That's right. right. That's right. What's the best advice you can give to an entrepreneur that's watching this right now who's struggling with doubt? Keep going and recalibrate. You know, I, I tell people, I used to be like a super workaholic and do th different things like that. If you work hard six days a week, take one day to Wusa to recalibrate. But just be like, you know what? I may be the crazy person. Yeah. Maybe that's not for me. Really recalibrate 
every six days. Yeah, you know, I'm big on numbers, but you know, calibrate on that seventh day. I don't yeah, care boy. what it is. You know, it may be an hour, it may be 12 hours, it may be 24 hours, but calibrate on that seventh day. You know, to realign. You know, it's a lot. You think it's your life? It's more complicated than that. You're not gonna pick out what you want to do. With it. You know, in one day, or you know, one year, or ten years. So continue to recalibrate, um, focus on your ultimate goal, and don't quit. If you care about it enough, you're not gonna quit. So do that. Stand down. That's right. It wouldn't be right if I, you know, bless you with a oh, bless you with a care package. Congratulations, bro. Boom. Hey, man. Richard Pryor, go. That's what it is. I appreciate you, bro. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I am, man. So yeah, uh, you know, one year strong with my queen but about you know probably like eight years and all but uh yeah coming up on the anniversary so gearing up for that now so that's right, <laughs> yeah, that's right. gearing up for that now so man that's why i do it i do it for the family yeah you know what i mean that's that's my push now so hey that's what it is yeah. but it's my man lee you're gonna be hearing big things from us you already know it much thank love bro gratitude thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. all right y'all yeah. peace yeah Nobody else, you be yourself When you look up in the mirror, I pray you see yourself Pray you see your worth and I pray you see some wealth Wanna free yourself, gotta always be yourself You ain't gotta be nobody else, you be yourself When you look up in the mirror, I pray you see yourself Pray you see your worth and I pray you see